it's Scott Manley here. Today I want to bring to you my latest endeavour in Kerbal Space Program, a competitive competition. Uh, it's kind of crazy. So what we have is a bunch of competitors all around the world who are participating in an online AI-driven uh, air battle. So Kerbal Space Program allows you to build aircraft. It models wing physics, it models collisions, it models thrust. It also allows you to have guns if you download the BD Armory mod, which is a much beloved part of the game. So for the past few weeks, I've had players all around the world competing not by flying their aircraft, but by designing the aircraft and then submitting them to the AI to fly them in a battle against the other aircraft. Now, this has gone through several rounds. Every round has a theme, it has very specific rules. This very first round was very small and the rule was that you had one gun, a specific type of gun, and you had to take the pieces of an existing aircraft and rearrange them to make a new aircraft. So we're scoring every round with two-thirds of the points coming from their performance in the air battles and there are multiple air battles per round because you know, luck is a fickle thing. Sometimes you do great, sometimes you do terrible, but the good planes tend to do great more often. And that's kind of the point. You know, if you just want to fly classic warplanes and shoot each other down, you have you know, War Thunder, you have DCS World. And so while there are many great ways to fly warplanes against each other, there's War Thunder, there's DCS World. This isn't about the flying, this is about the building and the engineering. And then, of course, sitting back and watching your planes murder each other. It's a spectator sport of sorts. So this was an example of one of those nail-biting conclusions that the AI and physics brings us. Rice corn was already damaged, and then he took a real hit to his tailplane. And, and surprisingly, the AI was able to recover despite having most of the aerodynamic surfaces missing or out of control. And eventually, after several minutes, was able to pull off this snapshot and it may not have done much, but it was enough to knock Professor Biscuit's plane out of the sky and take the match. And that was just one of many memorable moments in the judging process. So what we have is a series of thematic rounds where the contestants design things to try to fit to the rules and then the judges, uh, two of which are very famous individuals, Valentina Kerman and Jebediah Kerman, whose catchphrase is, make it work, please make it work, I will probably die in a fire if you fail to make it work. So we decided to call this Runway Project. So we've been running these over on my Twitch with the audience providing extra bonus points or penalties, depending upon the quality of the vehicle. And this is the point rankings after round one. Scott gets zero points because he's supposed to be running this. John F. President scored nine points, mostly because he crashed, more than normal. In fifth and sixth place, we had Chunkmaster Blast and Skysack, both with 13 points. Professor Biscuit got a respectable 14 points. Ricecorn's entry looked a little shaky, but it managed to shimmy its way into third place with 17 points. I'm not sure if there was any science behind the low canard's high wing of Aisha's entry, but that scored them 18 points. But the winner was Levy154, who took the classic Aeris 3A design, flipped the air intake upside down and added guns. And so with our proof of concept in hand, we moved forward onto round two. For round two, the theme was big gun, small plane. So every plane was required to be fitted with a GAU-8 Avenger. That is the same gun that fits on the A-10 Thunderbolt. It's designed normally to shoot tanks, but we thought let's have it fly in an air-to-air -air role. The, to ensure small plane, we required that every aircraft use the smallest jet engines available to them. And then we ultimately penalized everyone that used too many engines. We still gave them points for looks, such as this great entry from Rice Corny. He didn't quite get a small aircraft, but he certainly got an interesting looking aircraft. And it's one of the few cases I have of uh, aircraft getting shot up while we were flying them from the first person perspective. I say flying, we were just riding along, which is good because we didn't have to sit along while this happened to it. 
We also started allowing the designers of the planes to speak for themselves, to describe their you know, death machine in whatever words they thought were appropriate that would perhaps sway the judges. Some of the planes obviously were just straight up killers that would get lots of points in the main round, but some of the poorer planes had a chance of capturing the hearts of the audience and making up for those lost points in the main round with a plane that really epitomised small plane, big gun. And the one that did this best was the human goatee who not only had the biggest gun in the game, but also used only one of the smallest engines in the game to make a plane which barely flew. For comparison, this beautiful creature is by Teflon Mike, who obviously has tried to make it look like a legitimate fighter plane, but has had to resort to putting 12 of the little engines on there inside the big engines to make it look like a real thing. And while this was a stone-cold murder machine using its radar technology to get a bead on the targets and knock them out of the sky, even it had its limitations in combat. During one exciting round, it got a lot of kills and unfortunately expended all its ammunition and left him facing off against the human goatee. Now, the human goatee had a hard time keeping the gun pointed upwards, which meant that he hadn't had much chance to shoot it. But with only one target left in the sky, this little plane was giving it its best to shoot down the target. And then Teflon Mike's fuel-hungry mass of engines ran out of fuel leaving him on the ground and in second place behind the human goatee. This kind of thing is fantastic when it happens live because everybody ends up rooting for the underdog. So you can watch some of the highlights for round two after this, but these are the scores uh, as of round two. So uh, Lavie 154 took a solid first round and second round and converted it into first place. We had some newcomers down the bottom which built some cool looking ships but didn't score very well. Sturmhawk and Jean Coach stood out a lot. Of course, if you want to get in depth with the scoring analysis, you can join us on the Discord server where we discuss this. But now let's throw in some highlights and be a poor substitute for Top Gun 2.